Barry Allen QC reveals just what happened to him when he sat in judgment of the club's mismanagement on a panel set up by the Scottish Football Association. I wasn't ready for my family to be exposed to that and, and that caused me a lot of concern. He was summoned to an urgent meeting at the headquarters of Scottish Football at Hampden Park where Special Branch and anti-terror police said his safety was in danger from Rangers fans connected to Northern Irish paramilitary groups. We were given a full briefing on mail handling. I was uh, told that there would be certain items which I should under no circumstances open if they were not from a familiar source. I was told that I should take the mail into the smallest secure room with the fewest windows, have the family somewhere else in the, in the house whilst I opened the mail. He was briefed on bombs, razor blades contaminated with faeces, HIV or ricin. He should call the helpline and emergency services would come to him under no circumstances should he go to a surgery or hospital because of contamination fears. And at huge cost to the taxpayers, his house was under police surveillance 24-7 for several weeks. But as Rangers imploded this year, the activities of a small but violent minority widened way beyond Glasgow to the coast of Fife on the other side of Scotland. Starks Park in Kirkcaldy, home of Wraith Rovers. Earlier this year, a Wraith director was also part of that SFA panel which Gary Allen sat on. And when news of that became public, says club chairman Turnbull Hutton, all hell broke loose. We had a call from West Belfast and indicated that he knew who we were and, and to be careful. And then came the call from Fife Police. There has been a, a couple of guys have been uh, lined up to torch the, the stadium. To burn it down? Yeah, yeah. A QC, a club chairman, but it doesn't stop there. Newspaper, Scottish TV and BBC journalists in Glasgow have had to call the police this year because of threats to their homes and families, to say nothing of their workplaces. I've advised on 30, more than 32, since, say, December of last year. 32 uh, journalists? Yeah, and, and that would be on things like, you know, where people are going online and saying, well, we know what school your kids go to, and we know where you live, we know what pubs you drink in, and they, they publish that online and, and maybe make, make suggestions that someone should give the person a slap or pay them a visit and put them, put them right. And that's totally unacceptable. Well, it's a real wintry day here at Cathkin with the Lennox kicking off in the white strip. Cathkin Park, once home to third Lanark, a Glasgow football club whose financial mess proved terminal. Today, it's an eerie place, an echo of a club consigned to oblivion. The writer and social commentator Jerry Hassan has been following the problems of Rangers closely. I think Rangers do have a cultural problem and part of the Rangers sport particularly has a problem. I think it comes from being the dominant club of Scotland and they don't like being uh, challenged. They don't like uh, having things that are uncomfortable about their traditions brought, brought up basically. But all clubs have a troublesome minority. Can it really be the case that Rangers problem is any worse than any other club? Well, I, I've been on the receiving end of, of threats from other, other fans and things over, over the years, but I think because of the nature of the Rangers story and what's happened to them, I think that there's a real problem there, and I think the club needs to get involved in, in dealing with it as well. I know it, it is particularly bad um, in respect to some of their sites and some of the comments, and the intimidation is predominantly coming from, from their websites. They have a worse problem than other clubs? Absolutely. No question about that? No, no doubt about it. A QC, a club chairman, 32 journalists, and it doesn't end there. The editor of a factual book about Rangers this year expected a degree of controversy, but nothing like what would unfold. And I found a copy of the online broadcast in which um, people had been, the listeners had been told what my Twitter username was, and they had been, it had been suggested to them that they should contact me via Twitter and harass me. Um, the nature of what they should say to me was even given on the broadcast and it was really, really horrible, horrible, frightening, frightening stuff. Right, Angela Haggerty, her name is right. She, I think, probably f proofread and edited this book. You see this bitch, get her tweeted like f man, get her f tweeted like f She's a total, not a f piece of f 
There was personal details about me published online on blogs, uh, where I live, even my age range, which was very specific. And you lived in a small place at the time. It's not like you're in Glasgow, right? No, it was a very small place. Um, I think very small population. It would not be hard to find. So especially when you narrow it down by age range, name, you know, very specific details that were put out about me. Strath 